We recently completed a series on Oasis that presented us with one of what, in my opinion, is one of the most difficult ethical dilemmas in all of Fallout 3. This video will make more sense if you first watch that series by clicking here. When we arrived at Oasis, we discovered that a group called the Tree Miners were worshipping a talking tree. It was only later we realized that the talking tree is actually Harold, a human being who was mutated by FEV nearly 200 years ago. During the events of Fallout 2, a tree-like structure began to sprout out of his head, and it grew over the ensuing decades as Harold wandered the continent. It finally became too much for him when he reached the capital wasteland, and when he stopped here in the Oasis, his mutation took root, stopping Harold in place permanently for the rest of his life. His mutation, which he called Bob, then went on to produce seeds that the winds scattered all over the place, which miraculously took root and grew into lush forests. The problem is that Harold's mutation has caused him to become immortal. Well, as far as we know, he at least has an extended lifespan, centuries longer than that of an average human, possibly even millennia longer. Bloomseer Poplar thinks I'll live for hundreds of years, maybe even more. This was Harold's predicament when we met him in the Grove, and that is why he asked us to kill him. I had you brought in here to ask a very simple favor. Would you please kill me? It wouldn't be murder. He'd be doing me a favor. By that time, he had already been anchored to that spot for over 20 years. He can't sleep, can't eat, can't do any of the other normal things humans do. He just stands there as time goes on around him. He couldn't bear the thought of spending one more moment in that state. He'd much rather die. To complicate things, during those 20 years, a community has grown up around him. Founded by Tree Father Birch, the tree miners are more than just a mindless cult. I mean, sure, there's plenty of that. May you remain under the canopy of his protection. May your spirit rest in his branches. But they're also a community, like any other community in the Capital Wasteland, and in many ways, a much more admirable one. They keep to themselves, they defend what's theirs, but they treat outsiders fairly and politely. When they invite people into their homes, they're hospitable. You have a lot of nerve. We've shown you nothing but hospitality. And then instead of thanks, you choose to hurl insults? They thank people who help them by giving them gifts. Such is our tradition when honored guests are preparing to leave. They're also kind-natured. We learned this while talking with Branch Tender Linden. Branch Tender Linden was a Brotherhood outcast. His entire patrol was wiped out. He was at death's door, but the tree miners showed up and nursed him back to health. They didn't have to do that. They had no reason to do that. She nursed me back to health, and I've stayed ever since. I felt I owed these people for bringing me back from the brink. But they did it out of kindness, and it was because of that kindness that Linden decided to join their ranks. They even adopt orphans, at least as far as I'm able to tell. We met one child there, little sapling you, and we learned that she's the child of Tree Father Birch and Tree Mother Laurel. They're the best parents ever. I was born here, silly. Which is odd because they're both getting on in years. And I'm not saying that to be mean, they just both really look old. So old, in fact, that it seems unlikely that Laurel would be able to give birth. I think it's much more likely, unbeknownst to Sapling Yu, that she was an orphan whom Birch and Laurel adopted as a baby and raised as their own. If so, it's just one more act of kindness of the Tree Minders. Despite their goofiness, I think the Tree Minder community is worth preserving. Tree Father Birch certainly thinks so, which is why he asked us to apply sap on Harold's heart instead of destroying it. This sap would have prevented Harold from growing any further. If the same sap that you drank to purify yourself could be applied to his heart, it should stop the spread. His reasoning was that if Harold couldn't grow anymore, he would draw less attention to himself, which would make it less likely for bad actors like raiders and mutants to come by and destroy their community and end up killing Harold. His wife, Tree Mother Laurel, has a different solution. Instead of encasing Harold's heart with a hard, restrictive sap, she urged us to coat it with a liniment that would encourage more growth. The same person that created the sap also created this liniment. If you can reach his heart, it will assist him in making his influence increase. 
Instead of centuries, the wasteland will become green in mere decades. Just imagine how glorious that would be. Her argument is that it's better for Harold to grow farther and faster, because in so doing, he'll restore life back to the wasteland. And this is an extremely compelling argument. One of the first things we discovered when we arrived at the grove was that the water here is not pure. When we took a sip from a nearby lake, we took on rads. When we asked Tree Father Birch about it, he admitted that the water here is still irradiated, and yet we see life all around us. I'm afraid the water still bears the mark of man's greed. This can only mean that the seedlings produced by Bob and Harold are immune to radiation. For 200 years, the Capital Wasteland has been without any green life. The only trees we see are the burnt and blasted out husks of trees that died centuries ago. The entire point of the game is for Project Purity to succeed, to create a water purifier to make the waters of the Capital Wastelands pure for people to drink from. But here we find a source of vegetation that can still grow even in this environment. If we chose to side with Laurel, then the life that Harold produces would grow outside of Oasis, creeping south, eventually overtaking the capital wasteland itself. What if some of these plants bore fruit? We would then have a source of food that could grow in the irradiated soil of the capital wasteland, potentially revolutionizing the way people lived here. Depending on how fast Harold grew, we might even have a new source of lumber, providing people with the raw materials they needed to rebuild their cities instead of living out of crumbling buildings and structures that have been rotting for 200 years. It would give the people of the Capital Wasteland a unique resource that they could barter with. Fresh lumber, new fruits and vegetables, and these resources are renewable. Harold and Bob produce new seeds every single year. Once a year, Bob decides he's gonna go ahead and, and start growing these weird pods filled with tiny seeds. Well, all it takes is a good wind and the seeds just fly everywhere. Additionally, Bloomseer Poplar raises a great argument against Birch's plan to encase Harold's heart in sap. You'd think he'd realize that this place won't remain a secret forever. The caravans know about it and you found it. How long before someone comes to take this place by force? No, I say allow this place to grow and that issue becomes moot. She notes that we, the Lone Wanderer, found Oasis. The local caravanners already know about Oasis. They have been visited by outsiders before. Oasis, as it is, is already conspicuous. It's just a matter of time before more people discover Oasis. It's even mentioned on Galaxy News Radio. There's a place with lots of trees. A veritable oasis of green in that depressing sea of brown. It's just impractical to keep Harold and the Oasis a secret. But what about doing what Harold says? What are the ramifications of killing him? Well, if we kill Harold, he and Bob can no longer produce new life. We are not told that the other trees growing around him produce seeds of their own. Harold tells us that only he and Bob produce them. So with Harold dead, the grove stops. I don't know if the trees here will die without Harold, but I doubt new life would grow. The tree minders would of course be lost without Harold, but they're adults, they can deal with it, but Sapling Yu isn't. We learn from little Sapling Yu that Harold is her best friend. Oh, you mean Harold? He's really nice. Sometimes when I get really lonely, I go into the grove and talk to him. Sometimes I even curl up all cozy-like and sleep next to his root after I have a bad dream. Harold even tells us that the only bright moment in his life is sapling you. Actually, the kid is the nicest one of all. Use her name. She sneaks in here sometimes and just lets me talk about stuff I want to talk about. <sighs> Bob really likes her too because she makes me happy. <laughs> Which is why if we choose to side with either Birch or Laurel, we can through dialogue convince Harold that maybe his wish for death was selfish. So they really need me that badly, huh? 
<sighs> I guess I never thought of it that way. Awfully selfish of me. Frustratingly, we can't convince him of this before we make our decision. That, I think, is the important thing to consider here. There's no option to convince Harold to stay alive. There's no option to say something like, well, what about Sapling You? Aren't you concerned about her? What would happen to her if you die? There's no option to tell him everything we've learned from Lyndon and Birch and say something like, you're more important to the people of the Wasteland alive than dead. No, when we talk with Harold before making our decision, he's pretty clear and pretty firm. In fact, he flat out begs us to kill him. Can you imagine being stuck in one place for that long? Not being able to eat or to read or to sleep or anything? In the meantime, I have these tree minders bothering me every day about things I don't even care about! And I can't stand it anymore! Can you imagine that? Stuck here for centuries? I can't do it! I just want to be alone! Just me and Bob! Until the end! I don't want to wait until the next person visits. It could be years. You're all I've got. Just, just think about it, okay? I think it's good to sign with Tree Father Birch because the tree miners are a community worth preserving. Despite their quirks, the Capital Wasteland is better that they're there. However, when thinking about the greater good, I think Tree Mother Laurel's solution is the best. It has the potential to help the most people. Causing Harold's mutation to grow even faster will bring life to the Capital Wasteland, a life that's immune to radiation, and provide the people of the Capital Wasteland with new economic resources. But here's the problem. Harold isn't a natural wonder. He's not a resource to be exploited. He's a person. He's a human being, well, a mutated one. When I think about what we're doing if we choose to side with Birch or Laurel, we're invading the body of another human being and modifying his organs against his will. So, it looks like you decided to do things their way, huh? How come? If we think about it like that, both options become really messed up. And even though I think siding with Tree Mother Laurel would be for the greater good, the greater good. it is of course at Harold's expense. By siding with Tree Mother Laurel, we turn Harold into a slave. Despite what he wants, we are forcing him to work harder, grow faster, to produce more. Despite what he wants, we're imposing our will on a man who can't defend himself. He's completely defenseless. Despite what he wants, we're taking advantage of his time, energy, and his physical body because we know what's best for him. Is it selfish for Harold to want death? Even though it would break Yu's heart, even though the Capital Wasteland is potentially losing an incredibly important resource? Maybe. But I don't think anyone alive or anyone who has ever lived really knows what kind of hell Harold is living with but Harold. Burning Harold to death is one of the evilest things we could possibly do. But once he's dead, he's dead. He is no longer in pain. Choosing to side with either Birch or Laurel dooms Harold to an eternity of being a slave for someone else. By siding with Birch, we doom Harold to an eternity of being a slave to the Tree Minders. He becomes their unwilling god forever. By siding with Tree Mother Laurel, we doom Harold to an eternity of being a slave to the people of the Capital Wasteland, revitalizing their world, providing them with resources. Honestly, those two options are worse than killing Harold with fire. The ends justify the means argument would likely side with Tree Mother Laurel and say that sure, we're sacrificing Harold, but it's a necessary sacrifice. 
After all, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. But I wonder what that same person would say if, faced with a hypothetical question, is it okay to enslave a small number of people to provide resources that build a great society for others? So what, one might say, if we sacrifice the freedom of a few, if the fruit of their labor produces so much for so many? That type of thinking leads to atrocities. Forcibly sacrificing others is not noble. And so, in my opinion, as hard as it is for me to do, I think the most ethical choice is to do as Harold asks, to respect him as a person, not view him as a resource, to grant him humanity and dignity instead of turning him into an eternal slave. And so I destroyed Harold's heart in my gameplay, and the hardest part was having to meet Sapling Yu on my way out and to hear how heartbroken she was that her best friend was gone. Now that Harold's gone, I lost my bestest friend. All I want to do is cry. But that, I think, was the right choice. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear what you think and to find out what choice you made in your game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish many videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still find that you're not getting notified when I publish new content, consider following me on Twitter. I manually update Twitter every time I publish something new. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find my designs on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.